This is the brand new Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge. I finally got it right. And it's got the top tier Snapdragon X Elite. That's model X1E84100. The 84 indicates a maximum boost clock speed of 4.2 gigahertz, which differentiates it from models like this one, the X Elite X1E80100. This, by the way, is the new Microsoft Surface 7. Or even uh, this one, the uh, 64. This is the X Plus version that's being put into Microsoft Surface 7. But but a lower model doesn't necessarily mean less performance in all cases and in the real world, as you'll see. By the way, I bought a bunch of the new Snapdragon X Elites in different laptops in different configurations. Nobody sent them to me and I bought them with my own money and nobody's paying me to say what I'm about to say. This episode is partially sponsored by DB Code. More on that in a moment. There's been some confusion about benchmarks in the last few months as we awaited the release of these. And I want to start things off with a Samsung because there's been big claims by Qualcomm about performance of these things. There's been allegations of Qualcomm cheating. And for this particular model, there's been a huge range of different Geekbench scores that we've seen in the last week. I made a video about that recently. Well, now that I have all these in hand, I'm gonna try and put that to the test myself. And if you don't wanna watch the rest of the video, I'm gonna make it nice and sweet and short for you. This is my daily driver, the M2 Max MacBook Pro that I've been using for over a year. And the Geekbench score here is 2661 for single core, 14450 for multi-core. Apple M2 Max. 12 core processor. Now the new X Elite is also a 12 core processor. And if we look up one of the higher scores for the Galaxy Book 4 Edge, we get a higher score. Now that's the M2, right? For single core, so previous generation. So I'm also gonna check out the M3. But to make the long story short, these benchmarks are not lies, as I'll show you in this video. Before we get into some heavier benchmarks, let's take a look at Speedometer 3, which is indicative of what web developers will face when they're working on applications and what end users will experience with the applications that the developers develop for them. So this is called Speedometer 3.0. It simulates uh, to-do applications, adding, removing hundreds of items. It's got a lot of JavaScript workloads, which in the JavaScript VM in the browser, it runs on a single thread and it's currently running in Chrome. I prefer Chrome for web development because it has really nice tools. Edge is coming along, Edge is pretty good, but it hasn't edged out Chrome yet. Who writes these jokes? Well, look at that. That's a pretty bad score. But why? Why am I getting this terrible score here? Well, I'll tell you why. I have WSL installed here. I'm gonna open up Ubuntu. By the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, by the time you watch this, I may have already released the entire video of setting up a dev environment on this machine. And I'll link to that down below when it's ready. That includes WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, and other tools for developers. Windows Subsystem for Linux has an easy file command. And if we examine Chrome, we do this by pointing the file command, to the Windows directory where Chrome is installed. When we see that it's an Intel 8386 executable. So what we just saw, I didn't mean to trick you, but I wanted to demonstrate how Prism is working with Chrome. This is what Microsoft did with Windows on ARM to be able to run x86 programs on Windows for ARM. It's new and improved in Windows 24 H2, and it is a big improvement. I didn't notice any lag when I was using Chrome, but the speedometer benchmark clearly saw a difference, a big difference. Now, a side note for my developer friends, to be able to test out the actual performance that Prism is gonna get us, I have this little Mandelbrot test from Benchmarks game, which I've used on the channel before. This utilizes a lot of the CPU cores, so it's a multi-core test, and you can build this for ARM, and you can build this for x64. So I did. Let's compare the two. So I built it into the x64 directory. We're going to use a little commandlet in PowerShell called measure command and then run the Mandelbrot program with benchmarks game says 16,000 should be the param, but that might take a while. So I'm going to do 1600 instead just to get kind of an average baseline that shouldn't take long to prove that that's actually the 64 bit version. You can also take a look at task manager and go to details and you'll see all the different architectures that are running sort by architecture and everything that's ARM 64 is new native to the new machines. But anything that's x86 or x64 is not. It's being run through the translation layer, which is Prism. You can see that I have it running over here. Mandelbrot C Sharp x64. For the x64 version, we got 1.6 seconds. Let's do it again. 1.8, 1.4. Now let's do the ARM version. 1.4, 1.38, 1.8, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9,
1.3. So just maybe a little bit faster for the ARM version. Prism is doing a pretty good job here, but we're not done yet. There's some changes that I need to make to this machine and maybe they'll show a bigger difference. It's just a little snapshot to show you that performance is going to be a little bit degraded. Chrome is on that list of x86 programs, but now they do have an ARM for Windows version. That's actually the default here on the Chrome download page. Now, if you want the x64 version, you just go all the way down and go to other platforms and then you can choose Windows 11 64 bit here if you want to do these crazy tests yourself. But I'm doing it so you don't have to. Cutting in for a moment to tell you about DB Code, which allows you to supercharge your database management in Visual Studio Code with the DB Code extension. It's got seamless support for multiple database types and allows you to execute custom SQL and even visualize data with beautiful charts all within VS Code. You get inline SQL help and secure report sharing, and it's free during the preview stage. Early adopters will enjoy an extended trial post launch. Boost your database development with DB Code today. Well, I just ran it in Chrome for ARM. It's better, but I think we can do a little better. Then just to confirm that it's actually Google for ARM, you can do the same file trick. And there it is. ARCH64 stands for ARM architecture 64 bit. The other day on the live stream, I got a score of 28 on this machine. What is going on? Well, before we explain what's going on, I want to run Geekbench. Let's have our two friends join us, shall we? Surface 7 X Elite and the M3 MacBook Air. Let's get it going. By the way, if you're interested in the Intel version of the Surface laptop or the Snapdragon X Plus version compared to the X Elite, that's going to be a separate video coming up. So stay tuned. All right, we're done. And as we expected, the M3 does kind of like what we've been seeing for the last few months. Very good scores for the single core, 31, 34, and almost 12,000 for the multi-core. It's got an eight core chip in there, which is different than these two machines, which have 12 cores each. So they are going to have a higher multi-core score, or are they? Well, the Surface laptop gets 2756 respectable single core score, 14355 multi-core score, but uh, our Galaxy machine is not showing very good scores. It's not doing so well. And this is where a lot of the confusion comes in here. We see that the power plan is balanced. You set a balanced power plan when you want the machine to last a long time. The Surface laptop is showing a power plan of high performance, which is what I set it to. And now you got to wonder all the different scores that are available out there and the advertised battery length. They don't tell you exactly what power plan they use to get that long battery length. I would have to assume it would be balanced. And that's probably how most people want to use these machines. Why would you buy one of these machines if you're not interested in having your computer, your your Windows machine lasts more than two hours. That's one of the big benefits of these new machines, along with very low noise, except for the Samsung, which makes this weird squeaky sound when it runs heavy tasks. That's coil wine and also low heat. Right after running this, the MacBook M3 is at 27 degrees, 29 degrees for the Samsung and 30 degrees on the surface of the surface. All right, I'll stop making that joke. Back to the Samsung machine. How can we improve the score? Windows has two things where you can adjust your power mode and the power plan. And those things are in different generations of Windows and they can be adjusted separately. If you search for power, you can edit the power plan, which is currently set to balanced. And there is no other option here, but there are other power plans you can use. They're just hidden. I'm going to show you that in a moment, but there is another setting called power mode. If you go to settings and power and battery. This has power mode now. Samsung's power mode is set to best power efficiency out of the available three. Best power efficiency, balanced, and best performance. All three of those will give you different Geekbench scores. They'll give you different performance characteristics for your machine, and they'll make the battery last different amounts of time. I shouldn't have to say this, it's pretty obvious, but what's not obvious is how this interacts with the other setting, the old control panel setting of power plan. And also, while Samsung has best power efficiency as the base one, the Surface laptop has recommended as the first one on the list for power mode. They both have best performance, but Surface Surface has two options that Samsung doesn't have, and Samsung has two options that Surface doesn't have. So what are these power modes? There's a lot of different settings on how performance is affected. And unfortunately, there's not a list that I could find for power modes, and I don't know why there's a difference between these on the different machines. If you know, I'm sure people would appreciate it if you leave a comment down below. But what I can show you is what I prefer to use, which is going to be high performance. Let's, let's get them. I like performance. The higher the better. Now you might think that high performance is the same thing as best performance. 
And that's why you would be wrong. See, the annoying thing is that Microsoft allows you to modify both of these settings, the power mode and the power plan separately, and you have no idea how they interact with each other, which one is actually better, best performance or high performance. And there isn't a direct mapping between them, at least that I could find. So if you trust the system and you wanna embrace the new UI, go ahead, select best performance here and hope for the best. I'm gonna go one step further. Open up your terminal and type in power CFG. This is a configuration utility for power. You can go uh, slash list to see what's currently available. We can do something called a query and this will tell you the current power plans ID right here. It's a long GUID or global unique identifier and all the different settings that it controls. Hard disk, JavaScript, timer frequency, wireless adapter settings. Each one of these individual things can be set. You can write a PowerShell script to control all these and do a custom configuration for your power settings. I like to crank all this stuff up. And while I haven't found a way to have the power CFG command show you all the available configurations, here is a list of the ones that I found. Balanced, high performance, power saver, and ultimate performance. Now, some of these are more for enterprise Windows machines like ultimate. So if you try and set ultimate, it's just gonna give you high performance. Let's give it a shot. Copy this GUID and go back to the terminal. Power CFG dash duplicate scheme, paste that ID in there we go it's ultimate performance now you need to set active or slash s and then you can say scheme min if you go back to your control panel and power options and then choose power plan and now you'll see balanced and high performance there with high performance being selected now what does that tell us if we go to the modern ui and then power and battery now we won't be able to select anything under power mode because power mode is set automatically while high performance power plan is used. So we're kind of overriding the new UI. The power plan is always balanced unless you do the PowerShell trick, but best performance here combined with balanced plan does not give you the same performance characteristics that high performance does. And I'll show you why. If we select high performance and we use power CFG query, I can pipe this out to a text file. Now, if I go back and select balance and best performance power mode, then run the query again, save it. You can see that they're different. With each one of these settings being different, you're not getting the high performance that you would get if you just select best performance. <sighs> Microsoft, please please fix this so that we can understand what the heck is going on. Well, look at that. Now, this is the highest score I've seen so far for speedometer on the Galaxy machine, 30.3. That's pretty good. Considering the MacBook Air M3 got a lower score, 29.1. It's within the margin of error, so they're very close. Surface laptop got 27.7. They're all very close to each other. Let's go back to Geekbench. There we go. Now we're getting those scores that we should be getting because now we're in high performance. The Galaxy Galaxy machine 2861 12796 and look at this this is the lower model the 80 variety on the surface laptop and it's got a much higher multi-core score single core score just a tiny bit lower they're about the same so it's not necessary to get a much more expensive machine like this galaxy machine to get the best performance you get other things with a galaxy machine you get a numpad <laughs> If you need that sort of thing, you get a bigger screen, a much bigger trackpad. I'm still struggling with the trackpad on the surface. It might be just my unit because I haven't heard other people complain about it, but the haptics randomly turn on and off on that, which is a little odd. Otherwise, I love the surface device. Now notice I ran this without it being plugged in. Historically, Windows machines, Windows PCs on Intel and AMD chips, if you run those not plugged in, well, you're going to be struggling. How's the score going to change if I run this plugged in? Let's see. Got some results and it's exciting and a little weird at the same time. While the new MacBooks don't change their power profile based on whether they're plugged in or not, we've known that Windows-based devices do and very drastically, especially those with Intel and AMD chips. And the expectation with X Elites was that there's gonna be almost no difference, but there is. Our Surface device is very close. In fact, it's almost spot on for the single core and multi-core, uh, just barely a margin of error 
error there, but the Samsung device does much better plugged in under both single core and multi-core, gaining more than a thousand points on multi-core score and beating out my M2 Max MacBook Pro. So based on what you've seen today, I don't think you can say that Qualcomm cheated on their benchmarks. The XLE chips beat out the M2 Max, they beat out the M3, they don't beat out the M3 Pro or the M3 Max, but for a Windows machine to be able to last a long time, I still have yet to test that, but so far it's looking good. To be able to not be hot and not have crazy amounts of fan noise, that's already a huge boost in the Windows community. It is revolutionary if you think about it. And it's weird having these machines sitting on my desk and not making an insane amount of noise. Now, as a side note, I did actually push the surface to produce some fan noise while I was trying to get machine learning to work on it. And I was using standard techniques that actually use the CPU instead of the GPU or the NPU, uh, because unfortunately, at this time, you can't just use standard libraries like we're used to that'll just work. There's gonna have to be some more work done by Qualcomm and Microsoft to enable that, but they do have their own libraries that you can use. You just need to use their ecosystem and the SDKs in order to take advantage of that. Separate video though, not for this one. I do have a bunch more videos planned around these machines, testing developer workflows on these new machines. I made a separate video for developer setup on Windows for ARM. That's gonna be right over here when that's published. Otherwise, it's gonna be a temporary place holder. Uh, hopefully you watch that and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.